So I created this sample earlier in the week as I was talking to some old consultant friends of mine who had an issue where, well, people are promoting uh, their pages as news, but there's no easy way to demote them. So you used to be able to do quick edit mode and add the column, but that's not possible anymore because the promoted state field, which is used to set if a page is uh, news or not, is now in read-only mode. So, so here's my regular page. Uh, that means you have this promote uh, option right now, and then you can do post as news on the site. And now this is news, uh, but there's no way to, to get back. So if I go to pages library, right? So here's my page, and I now have this button called demote, and I will click this. Page is no longer promoted as news, but remember to republish your page. So I, I didn't add republishing to the page. So that means if I go back to the page, I have to republish it. And now you see the promotion is available again. Uh, so to do this, so there's a couple of things, uh, interesting things in this extension. Um, so one is the icon and getting, uh, getting the icon up there and also getting the theme colors. So uh, what you have to do is the easiest way. So, so for the image, I'm using an SVG file um, in, in the XML format. Uh, so there's multiple ways of doing this. So I'm not going into how you can convert and get your icons into the SVG files, but that's, that's possible. Um, but if you also want to get these as, uh, get the theming colors. Oh, let's do like this. So if we, so on the list view updated command, so, so this is this triggers when you when you when you pick an item. Uh, so I have this helper method here to get the theme color, um, which is very short. So basically what it does is it's using the global theme state object. So there's an there's tons of issues getting the current theme in an, uh, in a list extension, uh, but since since uh, since a theme is in a global state object, well, just let's p uh, pull it from there, and then that allows you to sort of get get the different slots. If for some reason this object will despair, we fall back to using the UI fabric get theme, and hopefully that will sometime in the future give you the right theme uh, and not just the default blue theme. So, so that's just to get the color. Uh, so what happens here is I have the same SVG um, code, and then I do a, and then we sort of, so if we set for fill, so, so I just slot the color in here. Right? So that means it, just picking up the theme color and then putting that in, as, in an SVG, and that means when you deploy this to different sites, the icon will be in, in the right color. Uh, so thanks to Hugo for alerting me that Icon URL or you know, Icon image URL is actually exposed on the command object, and then I'm checking um, also if you have permissions to edit uh, the item. So at the top here, just you know, using the page context to see, well, okay, you have add list items, because if you can't add list items, you can't really uh, edit it. So that's the checking on the permission if the option should show or not, um, and then the real work, right? So Fetching the fetching the uh, fetching the page and checking well if it is it already promoted or not. So that means uh, if I take this, so if I demote this right now, well this is not demoted, so we can't really do it you know, two times in a row. Um, and then I'm checking is is it checked out to some other user? If it's checked out to some other user, well you need to take ownership of it first. And then if everything is in order, you can then set the promoted state field to back to zero from two. That's, so that's what's happening here. Uh, but, but the crux of it all is that you can't use the normal update command on the list item. Since it's a read-only field, you have to use a validate update list item, which sort of skips past that read-only option and you can set the value. So, that, um, so that's sort of what's blocking you for using a normal update. And that's uh, basically it. So I'll show one more thing. Uh, so if you look at the elements XML. So if you deploy this to a site, so 119, that's a site pages library to ensure that it only appears in site pages. I've also added 
the writes here. So that means if you deploy this just to one site, that means it will do a pre-check and it won't show the um, custom action unless you have those writes. And then it's the same thing if you do tenant wide, but uh, but there's no option to have the writes, and that's why I have the writes check in the code as well. And that was the demo. Thank you. Before we go, sorry. Yes. I, I just let's let's recap on on a few things. Uh, sorry. Uh, Patrick also jump in here because this is actually really cool what you're showing right now in here just to people to understand uh, because I don't think everybody understands that when you're creating an extension uh, you can automatically make it available across the tenant in a document library or a list or a specific document library type and since the site pages uh, uh, library has a unique ID, which happens to be 119. I, I'm not sure if this new ID is, I think they're documented somewhere. If they're not, yeah. that's on actually me to yeah, I mean, fix. these these are all going back to SharePoint. 2001. Stone yeah, exactly. Yeah. SharePoint Stone Age, yes. Um, we're dinosaurs, I get it. And uh, now, um, but that basically means that whenever we are then deploying this solution uh, to the tenant, as part of the deployment, as part of the package, uh, we actually add uh, an entry to this uh, app catalog. There is a specific list. I don't know. Have you tested? Have you? Do you have an app catalog here? Can we actually show how it works? Because we have yes. some few minutes here. Um, and then if you go yeah. to site contents. Oh, yeah. So you you upload, yep. if, if you upload that, uh, so what happens is that when we're uploading the SPPKG file, SharePoint basically checks the inside of it and then realizes that, oh, you want this uh, button to be activated across all of the site pages, across the whole tenant automatically. And um, and that's actually really cool. This super powerful capability. Um, and how do we control that is using a, a tenant wide deployment list from the app, ca app catalog. So now if we go to the after deployment, the, first of all, it clearly says that we're doing that and there's the permissions. And now if you go to the site contents, we can actually see that there is a list, uh, tenant wide extension list. The last one on the list. This one is the one where we control the one of the extensions which will be exposed across the tenant. So now we can actually see here one of these entries is the one which you pushed in. Yes, for now we can say list template is 119. And that what happens on a runtime is that whenever a SharePoint is rendering the list 119, uh, on the back end, we're double checking that are there any tenant wide uh, extensions to be rendered. And then we basically on runtime render that. So immediately when the list, uh, the, the item is in this list, it will be then activated across all of the sites within a tenant. And so we don't actually deploy anything on a site level on runtime when we're rendering in the site 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 um, we actually check the content of this list and then if the entry is in here then we render the button and but it's really really powerful way of pushing extensibility on a list and libraries buttons and extensions and list your commandlets and executing your code then as part of the libraries as well um, Maybe one more thing, if you don't mind, Mikael, if you go back on yep. the on the individual page level, uh, just to call out that one, uh, because that's a classic discussion point. It would be really cool if we would be able to add the button on that page as well. Yes. So the toolbar yeah, we all can see here. And that's unfortunately currently not possible. So uh, please use the user voice. Let's get this fixed. Um, the, the people responsible of the pages, which is unfortunately not me, it's a different set of people and, and our team uh, are on the platform team, they haven't really prioritized that thing, but it would be really cool if we would be able to add extensions and buttons on this view, not just when you are in the site pages view. And just for this functionality to remote, it would be awesome if the product would allow you to sort of revoke news from this pane instead. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. There should be a native, yeah, a native way of doing that. And then if not, uh, we would be able to add additional buttons. Actually on that, even on that level, it would be cool mm -hmm. to have a, a additional way or support for having extensions on this panel as well, because that would be super yeah. powerful. Okay, but anyway, so thank you, Mikhail, on this one. Sorry for taking a few minutes extra, but I think it's it's good like to that. explain uh, for for yeah. different concepts and behind of the solution. So Patrick, but, but I think one, yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's some nice nice nuggets in this code for different things. So uh, yeah, people should take a look at it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm.